Tank, hey. Dogs are therapeutic. Dogs are a form of medicine. Dogs are incredibly powerful. Tank, come. Yeah. Our veterans, our troops, they're coming home from a war zone. They're trying to adapt back to, to civilian life, and it's very different. And we think this is one of the answers, one of the tools in the toolbox that can help them. 3,200 dogs are euthanized every day across our nation. Sit. Good boy. We've seen the list with, you know, kennel number 10. Maybe they're not even named at the time, and they're on that list. That's something that I take to heart, and I want to help change and make a difference. We're rescuing dogs from local shelters. We're training them as psychiatric service dogs. It takes us about 12 to 18 months. And then we're placing them with post 9-11 combat veterans suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder and or traumatic brain injury, TBI. I'm Ben Kilhefner, this is Tank, and I was a hospital corpsman in the United States Navy for the Marines and the Navy side. My job was to help anybody, either they're sick or they had, you know, been blown up in combat. The worst was in Kinnar, Afghanistan. You got people that come in pieces, you know. You got people that have been decapitated. You got a kid, you know, coming in, you know, half his body's gone. To know that when someone passes away on you and to see the photo of their family and their daughter and you know that they're not going to be home it's really tough that now I have a two-year-old daughter and that's all I can think about every day <laughs> Can I kiss? and that's why I found ground and shelter soldier because I needed something else to help drive me. And the good thing I found them because they helped me a lot. Come on, boy. You ready to work, huh? The first point of contact for a veteran when they reach out to Shelter to Soldier is typically an email or a phone call. And that phone call or email is a, a clear, definite cry for help. Ben came to our facility, his chin chattering, his hands shaking, his eyes at the ground. Wasn't able to make eye contact with me. I'd later found out he hadn't been out of the house for a little while. And I chatted with Ben out front of our facility for a few minutes and I could see it wasn't relaxing, wasn't changing. And I grabbed Tank, the first dog I had in mind that I thought would potentially be a good match for Ben anyway. We watched before our eyes, his breath slow down, his hands stopped shaking, his chin stopped chattering. It was like one of those magical moments that you can't describe. It's just something that I have with him that I will have for the rest of my life. That moment was a moment of clarity that hit my heart and my soul to say, you know, we're doing the right thing. We're on the right path. And what we're doing does help because I just witnessed it. Yep. Tank was originally found as a stray and his future wasn't looking very bright. I think we got Tank just in time. Good boy. Good boy. He's goofy, he's lovable, caring. <laughs> See, he heard. He's talking. He knows. He knows you're talking about him. <laughs> Good boy. Sit. Yeah. He's always leaning against me, putting his paw on my foot, trying to establish that connection still to make sure that, you know, hey, I'm okay and everything. Just like right now, you know. I saw that I was having a nightmare and stuff, and uh, he would nudge his nose and he kind of wake me up and, and they just look at me funny and I just look at him and I start laughing at the same time. And I was like, what are you doing, man? Why are you waking me up like that? But I, I just realized after that few moments that I was like, I must have been having a nightmare that, you know, he just woke me up from. And then that's when I sat in his bed and it was like, like I told everybody, it was just like an emotional moment. Just sat in his bed and started crying a little bit. And I didn't train Tank to wake Ben up from a nightmare but the connection they had and the other work that they'd had and forged together created that response for Tank to be there for Ben. So it's pretty special. I keep in touch with all my guys on a regular basis. My wife can contest to that. They always check up on me. They, they always say, hey, Doc, you good? You good? And it's always nice to be called Doc still, even though I'm out and they're out. 
we've lost about 12 guys to suicide in the last year. It's tough. And having this guy around, he makes things a little bit better.